Okay, thank you for the kind introduction. So it's an honor, obviously, to be here as the only European on the stage. And we cannot underestimate, I think, for, not for my practice, how much the International Hunter Collaboration has influenced my techniques. Uh, thinking that I would be here one year ago talking about robotics, uh, really, really, I would not believe you because I actually started... Uh, only getting the interest in the robot uh, less than one year ago. So I'm from Europe. That's across the ocean. These are my disclosures. I'm close to signing a contract of Intuitive to, to do, start some proctoring because uh, we obviously are going to need people in Europe if they're going to roll out this thing. So is this the, tu the future of the, the, the hernia surgeons? Um, I don't know yet, but I think it's at least interesting enough to, to, to have a close look. So we started at our institution a robust hernia program, so it's a robotic utility for the surgical treatment of hernias. So how did I get there? Actually, less than a year ago at American Hernia Society, I was, I was following some sessions and I saw some surgeons doing robotic hernia surgery, and, and I got an interest talking to, to people like Conrad uh, usually best, best discussions are at the bar, as you see there. Um, so I went home because I saw that, that, that people in, 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 in America really are adopting this hernia technique. I, I'm a key opinion leader in hernia. It's been my, my business since many years, both in, in clinically and uh, scientifically. And it's amazing to see how the adoption rate in, 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 in the U.S. is taking on. For this hernia. So what about Europe? I think if Americans look at Europe, they, they look like this. They look at the green spot. But we know very well in living in Europe, this is what Europe looks like. We have many different countries, many different systems of healthcare, many different systems, level of economic prosperity, uh, very wide variations of, for, for example, the distribution of robots. So even in a small country, this is Belgium, um, if you look at that and you ask to an American what's happening in this country, this is distribution of robots. You, you're probably going to think in the south there's, there's mountains or there's desert, but we don't have mountains, we don't have deserts. As a Belgian, you immediately see that this is the difference. This is the, the northern part, we speak Flemish, we speak Dutch. The southern part, the people speak French. So although federally we have the same system of health care, the introduction of the robot was completely different even in this small country. So you can imagine across Europe how, how patchy that would be. So I live in the northern part. We, we, we moved to a new hospital about two years ago. And we acquired a robot a little bit less uh, than one year ago, the new generation XI. Our urologists were using the robot for four to five years. And actually, the manager of the hospital came to me as head of the department of surgery is there no, nothing you can do about w with the robot the other days that they are not using it? So having come back from America, uh, I started to do my training. And this is a slide I emphasize a lot when talking in Europe now about this, is that you don't just go home and decide, I'm going to start to do robotic surgery. You have to have your training. You need a proper training to do that. I spent more than 34 hours on the simulator. I did training online. I was lucky to get to, 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 to be able to join people in America at the Hernia Summit, like they call it, in Cernivelle, to do a cadaver lab. There was another cadaver lab in Paris, and there was another cadaver lab in New York, which I joined and I signed up for uh, through the International Hernia Collaboration. And I cannot underestimate the importance of, of really having contact, not only at the meetings, but also in between during during my daily work constantly with, with this international hernia collaboration platform, how to introduce that. But I think it's a very important thing uh, for my startup with the robot. So we started the 2nd of September. We had Archana Ramashwamy from Minnesota coming over. Actually, she was on vacation in France, so we, we, we brought her in um, for assisting during the first uh, groin hernias with that. I, I had agreement with my management that I could do a first trial with 50 groin hernias, 40 ventrals, and 10 TARS. 
So actually my original plan was first I will do a few months of groin hernias and then Conrad was planned to come over at the end of October and then I want to start to do ventrals. But after two, three weeks I got bored with the groins and I started to do the ventrals. So by the time uh, Conrad was scheduled to visit, I already felt that I could move and make the next step. And, and we went for the TAR. So this is something that amazed me a lot, the, pro the, the quickness of the proficiency you can have with the robot. So after five months, we, we finished our 50 cases. Uh, and this is the skin-to-skin -skin time. We monitored all the time, but this is only the skin-to-skin -skin time. And you can obviously see there is a decline in the timing. If you put numbers to it, this is the unilateral hernias. You see the first half and... and, and uh, diminish the time close to uh, 47 minutes at the mean and bilateral also. You see the, the last ones are the only ones beneath one hour so obviously you see that the mean probably will go down a little bit. So how does this compare to my laparoscopic uh, tap? Um, we put all our data in the URHS database so for me it was very easy. It took me uh, 10 minutes actually to extract this data on the skin to skin time for my other patients, so these are my personal cases, not of the, of, of the department. So you see that the operating time for the robot comes very close to my laparoscopic time and probably will, will, will not be significant different with increasing proficiency, which I heard also from one of the previous talks, which is uh, actually, this is a concept that most people in Europe that would think it takes so much more time. So only a study of 50 cases you already show that this is not the case. And obviously having an XI might influence this timing a little bit uh, because obviously the SI is a little bit more complex. So in six months, this is half a year, uh, 26 weeks, this is what I've done. And I think it's an important and interesting slide to show why am I doing groin hernias with the robot and why am I so happy that my manager allows me to continue to do that because I build my proficiency on that, going to more complex ventral hernias, the tar, the hiatal hernias where you need four arms, which adds another complexity. So moving up the cases. So that's the second study that's ongoing, that's on the, and then the tar, we did, and we had Conrad come over the end of October. By now, I've also finished my 10 cases of TAR. Uh, but actually, I sit down with the manager. We also did a very good cost analysis, for example, doing groin hernias with only two instruments, things like that. So they actually allowed me, give me more or less carte blanche so I can do all my practice with, uh, with the robot at the moment. Uh, so we have, I do a lot of workshops with, for certain companies not specifically intuitive, but of course people will come and see, and this is how the Ro European surgeons at this moment still are, they, they seem interested and they, they have a look, but they're still afraid to push the pedals a little bit, but I'm sure it's going to come. Um, actually, we're preparing for that, we're preparing to get the interest growing, so in one year from now, in 18, don't mistake the date, it's 18, we're going to organize a, a, a symposium specifically targeted at the abdominal wall robotic surgery. And obviously also at the European Hernia Society meeting, there will be some lectures there already. Uh, Conrad is coming over, we're going to do some live surgeries there. So probably we're going to create some interest uh, in Europe. And actually we showed that also in European setting, you could, could come with a business case where your manager will allow you to perform the surgery on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you for the attention.